Greetings everyone, my name is Eyal Weber and today in this video I'm going to begin with the issue of whether or not Ashkenazi Jews are really Jews. So in order to deal with this issue I'm going to take a path that most of the time is not taken by videos on this issue. And the path I'm going to be taking is concerning things that are historical, meaning archaeological and um, textual context, as well as those that deal with halakha, which is Jewish law. I'm not going to be taking this from a promotion perspective, I'm only going to be dealing with it from a fact-based perspective. And I'm not going to be dealing with something that comes from outside of uh, Torah, outside of Halakha, but something that's within Torah and Halakha. So in order to differentiate the issue, uh, one has to know exactly what the, the terminology really means. Uh, in modern times, when you say a Jew in Europe, for example, um, a Jewish community in Europe, you could easily be talking about an Ashkenazi Jew, a Jew's origins um, in terms of a uh, Jewish community-wise, comes from Northern Europe or Central Europe, or you could be talking about Jews who within the last 100 years or so, or the last 200 years, made their way from other regions into Europe. In order to understand exactly what this issue means from a halakhic perspective, one has to deal with several issues. The first issue is that within Torah Moshe, or within Yahudut, or Judaism, the, the element of the Jewish father determines the person's tribe or inheritance rights. Uh, this is found in the sources that I give below here. And then the next issue is the mother. The mother determines the national standing. And I list a number of sources for that also within the Tanakh, uh, the um, Torah, uh, Torah, Tanakh, as well as um, different halakhic texts. Uh, the next issue is that a marriage has to be valid according to halakha, which has a ketubah, or a wedding contract. And then the third thing is conversion through a valid death deed. These things are what determine in Jewish law who is a Jew. Now, it must be understood that if a person has Jewish parents that go back to whatever time frame in history, or if a person converted, both of these paths are considered to be pristine and pure Jewish ancestry. So for example, a person who descends from a, per, uh, a person, a woman or a man who converted, who married a Jew, whose family had been Jewish for a number of years, that person's ancestry is just as pure as someone who had both parents being Jewish or both parents being Israeli. Now getting back to the issue of um, now getting back to the issue of Jewish presence within uh, Northern and Central Europe, the first recorded presence we have um, of Jews being in the region comes from about the 3rd century or the 4th century uh, from the time of the Roman Empire when uh, Constantine ruled. During that time there had been a sizable Jewish community in the Roman Empire in Italy. Um, some of them who had, been, uh, who had moved there on their own and some of them who had been conquered during the Jewish revolts against the Romans and had deported into Italy. Um, over the years, a number of those Jews made their way further north, and one of the first references we have to Jews in Ger Germany, for example, is in Holon, where uh, basically there's a description of uh, Jews wanting to be involved in the uh, uh, governmental process. And what you see here is the actual response from Constantine that Jews could be involved in the governmental process in Holon, Germany. In later years, there was Jewish migrations that took place from uh, other areas of Southern Europe, uh, from Spain, um, as well as Turkey, that actually took place uh, partially because of the different social conditions that were happening. Um, it is also important to note that some of the earliest um, Jewish migrants into Central and Northern Europe were merchants uh, who made their way there in order to do trade. There is um, a certain amount of evidence from archaeology that, um, as well as uh, textual evidence, that seems to point to about uh, 20,000 or more Jews being in the uh, Central European region um, between the um, third century to about maybe the uh, Middle Ages. Those numbers increased with uh, the expulsion of Jews from various countries, um, as well as the conversion of local women into Judaism and the marriages between the Jewish men and Jewish women from those regions. And on the topic of conversion, it is important to note that in order for a non-Jew to convert to Judaism, there had to have been at least three Jews there who were born Jewish uh, to officiate over the process. This, of course, then leads to one of the most controversial areas of this topic, and that is the issue of the Hazar Empire converting to Judaism. Now, I'm not going to get into all the different details of this topic. I'll probably cover something about it in the, another video. But I want to cover the issue of um, the DNA aspect of it, of the previous studies around the late 1990s and early 2000s that was done on DNA, which showed that Jewish communities had, uh, in various areas, had common DNA signatures, versus this uh, one new study that supposedly came out recently that claims that uh, there is no connection between Jews and that there is no genetic makeup that is similar between Jewish communities. I would further like to note that this particular graphic that you see, which I've found from somewhere else, doesn't even really accurately describe 
either group of studies. It doesn't describe the previous studies of the 1990s and 2000s, and it doesn't describe this supposedly new study, which I'll show in the next slides. Now, for those who um, have seen this recent study, and um, or at least the supposedly details about it, and um, want to follow it just because it exists, um, it's important to note that there's a lot of controversy concerning this study, because it's only one study, number one. And when I looked around, I couldn't find any details that describe how this researcher who came to this conclusion that there is no connection between Jewish communities, um, how they even did their uh, research. I couldn't find anything about like, the actual details, sample sizes. I couldn't find anything about um, exactly how many people did they test. In fact, if you're going to trump a previous um, experiment, you have to be able to go back and repeat the same results with the same test model, which includes the people who were studied. This uh, supposedly new study didn't have any of that information. And as you'll see in the slides from the Forbes article describing the controversy about this latest study, the, the views of it go all over the place. Um, and that's why I say it's important to note that uh, when you rely on uh, scientific information, you generally don't rely on just one little source who you know, makes a claim without looking into the details of the source. The reason why this is even uh, an issue at all is because there are people who want to claim that uh, Jews of Ashkenaz or Ashkenazi Jews are the descendants of converts. That, um, and that there is no origin, um, Jewish origin, to uh, Ashkenazi Jews, that they're simply uh, descendants of converts who made themselves into Jews. Uh, as I've shown earlier, that's not true, but also the fact that a person can't convert to Judaism without there being some Jewish persons there to convert them to begin with, number one. Number two, when a person is converted according to Jewish law, they're just as Jewish as someone born into a Jewish family. That's the way it works in terms of Torah and Halakha, um, and there is no disagreement of the sources about that from a valid uh, a person who knows valid halakha. It is important to note that within halakha, DNA can't be used as a method of determining who's a Jew for a number of reasons which I can explain later. Now I'd like to cover some of the misunderstandings that people have about uh, the issue of uh, DNA testing in terms of Jewishness. Um, one of the major misunderstandings that people have is concerning what exactly these studies are saying. Uh, first of all, DNA testing does not tell you who exactly your ancestor was from the previous time. A DNA test, for the most part, can say that these two groups of people who have had no connection for, let's say, centuries, uh, show uh, either having a common DNA signature, common DNA markings, or they don't, one of the two. Uh, DNA testing can also show that um, groups of people, for example, who have had uh, very internal um, marriage uh, customs or marriage traditions to where they can only marry certain types of people under certain conditions and that their uh, intermarriage with other groups outside of their particular group is even limited, those kind of studies can show that if these two groups of people from different regions had the same culture from a previous group of generations, that if their DNA signatures are similar, it could show that they had a common ancestry from a certain period of time. Further to all everything that's been mentioned previously, DNA testing on its own and by itself can't really show you a lot of information besides showing links between other people who were tested also. Um, the reason behind this is, is because uh, having a common DNA signature on its own doesn't explain how or why it's common. Uh, that's why uh, historical records, that's why uh, information about uh, a culture that both uh, groups of people are, or various groups of people came from who have the same signature, and that explains why their DNA is the same or why it's similar speaking, even when a person converts to Judaism, they have to marry within the Jewish community, within those who were born Jewish, because there's no way for them to learn the Hebrew language without having someone teach it in the world. The only people who can really teach the Hebrew language are those who grew up with it. Uh, they have to be able to uh, know how to continue Judaism, and that can only happen with people who were trained in it from the time they were kids. And that's why one does not find uh, within the communities that converted or um, were separated uh, to a certain degree, one doesn't find things like uh, Torah scrolls, one doesn't find the knowledge of the Hebrew language, within communities that are exclusively made up of converts. So in closing, according to Halakha, Ashkenazi Jews are 100% Jews. Uh, also, uh, Jewish presence has been shown that existed in uh, Central and Northern Europe, going back to the time of the Roman Empire. I've also shown, uh, based on this information, that if an uh, Ashkenazi Jew marries a Mizrahi or a Sephardi Jew or, or a Temeni Jew, their children are going to be Jewish just as much as anyone else. And also the existence of things like the Hebrew language, Torah scrolls, language skills, text, Amongst Ashkenazi Jews, going back more than a thousand years, shows that they're also Jewish. Um, the genetic studies, uh, the proven ones, actually show that there's a connection between various communities that comes from similar ancestry more than 2,000 years ago.